Hello there, and welcome to Module 5, Video 3. In this video, we'll be discussing compound events, and how you can find probabilities of compound events by using a two-way table. Let's get started. A compound event is any event that is formed by combining two or more events together. In this video, we'll be discussing two different kinds of compound events. The first one is an OR. Now, when I say that X or Y happens, that means that only X happens, only Y happens, or both of them happen. So in probability, an OR is what's called an inclusive OR. It includes the case when both events are happening. The second type of compound event that we'll be discussing is an AND. And when I say X and Y happen, that means that both events have to happen in order for X and Y to occur. Let's work on an example. Suppose we had this group of 10 people. Some of them are wearing hats, some of them have mustaches, and some are just totally plain. Let's make sure we understand the definitions of these compound connectives. First, what is the probability that somebody is not wearing a hat? To find this probability, first we have to count up how many people are not wearing a hat. Well, there are five. So the numerator of our probability will be five. And since there are 10 people, the denominator will be 10. Five tenths is the same as one half or 0.5. Next, what is the probability that somebody is wearing a hat or has a mustache? In this case, we're interested in three different groups of people. We are interested in those who are just wearing a hat but don't have a mustache those who have a mustache but are not wearing a hat, and those who are wearing a hat and also have a mustache. So when I count up the number from my numerator, I need to include all three of these groups, those who are wearing a hat, those who have a mustache, and those who have both. In this case, that's going to be eight people out of 10, which is the same as 0.8. Lastly, Let's determine the probability that somebody is wearing a hat and has a mustache. In this case, when we go to count up the people, since the connecting word is and, we need to make sure that they fit both groups, that they are wearing a hat and that they have a mustache. In this case, there are four individuals, so that becomes our numerator, and when we divide that by 10, the total number of people, we end up with a probability of 0.4. Let's see these probabilities at work in a two-way table. A class of 30 students are asked whether they are a parent or not. Their responses are compiled in the two-way table below, and we shall use this table to answer the questions that follow. Please notice that this time we've been told to express our answers in decimal form, and also that we should not round our answers. Let's look at the first question. Find the probability that a person is a male or a parent. Since our connecting word here is or, we need to count up all of the people who satisfy one or both of these conditions. For example, there are 11 people who are male and who are not a parent. So these 11 people satisfy the male condition, but not the parent condition. These four people are a parent, but they are not male. So these four people satisfy the parent condition. And there is one person who is both male and a parent, so they satisfy both conditions. So to find our numerator, we're going to add all three of those numbers up, and then we'll divide by the total number of people, in this case, 30. When I add the numerator together, I end up getting 16 out of 30. We were directed to write our answer in decimal format, but not to round. So when I divide 16 by 30, I get kind of a messy decimal, I get a repeating decimal of 0.5 with repeating threes. Let's do another example. This time, we need to find the probability that a person is a male and a parent. In this case, since the connecting word is and, we need this person to satisfy both conditions. In other words, this person must be in the row for male and the column for parent. The only person that fits that property is that one person in this overlapping box. So this is going to be our numerator. 
Since we're still looking out of the total group of people, our denominator is still going to be a 30. When I divide 1 by 30, I end up getting 0, .0 repeating 3s. So the probability that somebody from this group is a male and a parent is 0, .03 repeating. Now, sometimes compound probabilities can be kind of hidden a little bit, and we're going to see that in this next example. Let's find the probability that a person is a mother. Now, our table does not include that word mother specifically, so we need to figure out what exactly is meant by mother. In this case, we're going to conclude that by mother they mean this person is a female and this person is a parent. To find this probability then, we need to find all of the people that are in the row for female, but also in the column for parent. In other words, these four people here. This is going to be my numerator. Since we're still looking out of all of the people, our denominator will still be 30. And when we divide, we end up getting 0.1 with repeating 3s. Let's do another example similar to this one. Let's find the probability that somebody is not a father. In this case, there are a couple of different ways that a person could not be a father. One way, they could not be a parent, or they could be a mother, right? They could be female instead of male. So we can rephrase this probability not a father as the probability of not a parent or female. When I look at the boxes involved, these 11 people were men who were not parents, so we need to include them. These 14 people are also in the column not parent, so we need to include them. And these four people are parents, but they were females, so they're not fathers. So my numerator can be found by adding all of these numbers up, and then we can divide by the total number of people, or 30. When I simplify my numerator, I get a total of 29 out of 30, which in decimal form is going to be 0.9 with repeating sixes. Now I'll point out that another way we could have found this probability was by subtracting our answer to part B from 1. In part B, we found the probability that somebody was both male and a parent. This probability, the probability of not a father, is the complement to our answer to part B. So if we took our answer to part B and subtracted it from 1, we would get the same answer. Knowing multiple ways to find a solution is an excellent way to be able to check your work. This concludes our video on finding the probability of compound events by using two-way tables. In our next video, we'll discuss how to find these same probabilities by using formulas instead of two-way tables. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.